okay this is a good place to start building your rear frame um, start with the cross member that runs between the two rear wheel arches what you're going to need and I pinched this off of idea off on that green is two spacers otherwise all you're going to do is is crush the top of your turret um, these um, top swivel um, top and bottom swivel nuts make perfect spacers because they're domed at the at the bottom and sitting there lovely unfortunately i've only got one so <laughs> i've got a i don't know if you can see it but i've got a nut that side but so once you've got your bar cut to length, got your spacers, mark through from underneath, drill two holes, one on each end, find some nice long nuts and bolts, good place to start. See you in a bit. Okay, so we got our rear bar in. My next problem is how am I going to attach this side frame onto it? Um, this is really, really thick stuff, and this is not. <laughs> so, if you weld it to get this hot enough to melt in, you're just going to burn through this. So, what I've come up with is to bolt these pieces of angle onto that and stitch weld them here and there as well and then we can do the same here so we can bolt through there and weld thick to thick and I think that will spread the load on that stress point there pretty good so Let's give that a go.
Okay, I just wanted to show you what we've come up with before we weld it. Um, as I was explaining at the car, I think that will. Yeah, by the time that's welded in, I think that will make a nice strong connection between this thicker stuff and the thinner stuff. Um, this is the trade off between using what you've got and using what you'd like to use but of course it's not going to cost you anything like as much as if you went out and bought it all new so and just in case you were wondering um, yes we are still picking from the junk pile over here although it is much depleted as you can see but uh, that's to be expected that's built all of the front frame as well so but I think we'll be able to pick through the bones of it enough to, to finish something that works anyway. Okay, catch you in a bit. Okay, so we've got the framework bolted in there. Um, now what we've got to do is turn our attention to the braces that are gonna secure the framework and brace it up to the parcel shelf. Um, what I've got is a pair of these box sections. Um, what I like about these is although they're not very thick, they're nice and wide, so they should make a reasonable job of spreading the load over what is quite a thin parcel shelf. So just a couple of holes drilled each end, picked up on the existing holes in the parcel shell. Um, if we go underneath, you can see it's exactly the same under there. So what we've done is sandwiched the parcel shelf with those two and then what we need to do, I found these which are the off cuts from the front braces and looks like they're going to work really quite well. Two, there we go. So if we fix them at the top and the bottom. I think that'll achieve what we're trying to achieve. Right, let me get on with that and we'll see you in a bit.
Okay, so now we've finished the braces, um, this is what I've come up with for the pivot. So what we've got is some stud just to obviously brace across. Uh, got a little bit of eighth plate. Um, this is a lower wishbone shaft from an XJ6, which is perfect because it's nice and long. Uh, I think this is a piece of steering column, but don't quote me on that. Uh, so we need to bolt, obviously, the stud into the side frame, bolt this to spread the load, and then I'm going to use, I found these up in, this, in the top shed, so I'm going to use these little exhaust brackets to tie this to the plate, and hopefully we should be nearly there. So this is just a load of marking out and drilling. So let me bring you back when we've got all that together. And I'll show you how it ties up with the, the other frame. See you in a bit. Okay, so we've got all this bolted down just how I wanted it. So that's nice and sturdy. What I wanted to show you was my superb locking disc. Uh, this is the point where a lot of guys get their CNC plasma cutters out. And uh, we haven't got one of those. So this is started life as a lamp stand, I believe. Um, filled with plywood, drilled some holes. This goes here. I need to attach it to this frame and then we are nearly there so we need to think about the other stand so let me get on and I'll see you in a bit So the only thing I wanted to add to the stand and then we can put it to bed is how we support this main pin and uh, what I've got is this piece of angle goes up there and then bolts through there so you've got a nice if effectively you then got a, like a U channel let me just see that. So you get the idea. So that should be just fine. So let's get these little cut the last bits bolted together and let's get this thing spinning. Okay, bracing. Before you mount your mini shell on a, the setup like this where you've got a front frame and a back frame. Make sure you've got some bracing, at least across the doors, preferably something better than this lightweight stuff. This is how this car comes, so, you know, it's better than nothing, but something, you know, more substantial would be better. Um, if you don't, and you've got a, a rotten shell, if you hang it, you know, like we are here, chances are it's just going to fold up like a pack of cards. Okay. Okay then, let's give it a go. Okay then, that's it. That's the end of my how I built a mini rotisserie with what I had lying around. This isn't a how to build, this is just how I did it. Uh, 
hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something from it. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. See you in the next one.